Welcome back to Aliens, my name is Savin Reddy and in this video we will talk about HTTP methods. Now if you are learning networking for the first time or if you are working on REST API, you might be knowing this concept, we have different HTTP methods. Now HTTP basically stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and it has a lot of properties, right? The web is working on this protocol now and then when we talk about HTTP, we have these methods, right? And normally in REST terms, we call them as verbs because they're actions. Example, we have famous four methods here. We have get, post, put, and delete. So these are famous. Again, we have some more methods as well, but these are commonly used. All these methods has some purpose. Now, whenever you work with web application, we have this famous operation, which is CLOAD operation, which is create, read, update, and delete. So example, let's say if you are working on a website where you want to post something on a website, of course, you'll be creating a post. When you want to read something, you will be reading the post. If you want to update something, you'll be updating the post. And then if you want to delete something, of course, you will delete it. And that's where we have this code. Now we can use this method of HTTP to do work with that. So example, let's say if you are working on REST. Now in REST, we create resources. So we create resource, we consume resource, and then we sometimes we update and delete resource. So how can you match it? It's very simple, actually. So let's talk about get. Get method is typically used to fetch data from the server. That's why we say get. We have put and post using which you can create and update resource. Now there's a huge confusion in the community which one to use for what. Example, some people say we should be using post to create data or to create a post. Some people say we have to use put to create a post. So logically it should be post to create a content and it should be put to update the content. So we have post which will create, we have get which will read, we have put which will update and of course it makes sense now we have delete to delete the resource. So these are the four methods we have. Now you can classify these methods in two parts. One is a safe method and second one is the unsafe methods. Now what is safe and unsafe here? Now let's say if you are trying to access some data from a server. So every time you fetch data, of course you will get the same data if it is not changing. So let's say if you are fetching my record. So let's say as an alien, I have an ID as one. My name is Naveen and let's say my favorite technology is Java. So if you have these three parameters, of course every alien will have different values. So let's say we have alien two, alien three, alien four. Now when you are fetching for alien 1 or if when you are fetching all the aliens, every time you fetch it, it will not affect the server. So when you fetch data, you are not changing data on the server. The real time data is not changing and that's why we call it as safe method. But that's not the case with other methods here. Example, let's say if you say delete. Now the moment you say delete, it will delete something from the server data or server database. That's not a safe method now. When I say unsafe, it doesn't mean you should not be doing that. Of course, if you want to delete data by purpose, you'll be doing that. And then we have post and then we have put. So let's say if you want to create a data, of course, you are creating a new data on the server. So that's you are changing it. And same goes for put. You are updating something. So we can divide in two parts. We have safe and unsafe. So safe is get and unsafe is all these three parts. Now with this, we have one more important term, which is item potent. Okay, so I'm not talking about safe and unsafe here. So we have a very different word. So if you talk about these three methods, which is put, post, and delete, we can apply item potent here. Now what it means, let's say we have four records and you want to delete something. So let's say if I file a delete request for alien ID three, if I do that for the first time, of course it will delete the third alien. But what if by mistake, if I'm clicking that multiple times, I'm trying to delete the third alien and that's fine. Once you have deleted the alien three from database, of course you don't have any more. Even if you do that 10 times, it will not affect your database. So what about put? Now when you say put, let's say if you're updating a resource. So let's say we have alien ID two, which has name Kiran and then technology is Flutter. Now in this case, what will happen is if you update it, let's say Kiran now want to shift from Flutter to Django. Now in this case, what will happen is if you try to update this data and if you do that for the first time, data will go from client to server for the update and on the server side, it will get updated. But here's a twist now. What if I do multiple times? And of course the data is there. The data has been changed from Flutter to Django, even if you say 10 times said Django said Django, nothing will change because the data is already updated. But now what about post? Now in post, let's say if you want to create new records, the moment you say post, the new record will go on server. It will create a new alien for you. Let's say we are creating fifth alien now with this record, with this data. Now what if instead of doing that for once, I'm doing that for five times. This is where the problem starts because the server, you will create multiple alien object there. We don't want that. That's why we classify delete and put in item potent. So they are item potent, which means even if you do that 10 times, it will not affect the server. But post is not item potent. And so that's why you have to use post and put in a proper place. So normally we use post for creating data. We use put to update data. 
So that's our HTTP methods. I hope it made some sense to you. Even if you're working on survey technology, we do use GET and POST. But then the moment you talk about APIs, if you talk about contracts, that's where we have to use these four methods. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for other videos. Bye-bye.